So after all that, the FIA has admitted that their rule changes last year failed. Nicholas Tombasis, the FIA's single seat director, has basically said that two car lengths behind the car in front, the amount of load has been reduced by half. Thanks to all the technical innovations that teams have introduced to try and improve their own cars whilst really not considering the act of other cars trying to overtake them. So all of the stuff that was trying to encourage the entertaining aspect of Formula 1, like we saw at the beginning of 2022, has mostly gone. We are now approaching a time that we were seeing back in 2020 and 2021. All the times when we were complaining that we're not seeing enough overtaking, the FIA goes, okay, we're gonna fix that with Ross Braun overseeing it. And now we need to go and fix it again because the FIA is now promising that in 2025, they are going to go and try and fix it one year before another big technical revolution and regulation change. So uh, how did we get here? Well, it's all to do with Aston Martin. Now I was talking about Aston Martin yesterday regarding Lance Stroll and how he is pretty much one of the big liabilities for their conquest of championship titles going on in the future. But this time around, it's all to do with a rear wing that they introduced. Now Aston Martin's lot at the beginning of 2022 was pretty bad, very bad in fact, with of course Lance Stroll's upset and whinge of Monaco 2022 being the epitome of all of that. <laughs> music to my ears in a way. But Aston Martin's rear wing did turn heads because it was very good in terms of performance for the Aston Martin car itself at a time when they desperately needed it. But as a result, it caused a lot more outwash to actually be emanated for it. And therefore, drivers and cars behind actually reported it being very difficult to overtake the Aston Martin and having to rely more and more on DRS to try and get past them. So if you were caught behind Sebastian Vettel, for example, you pretty much are more likely to stay behind that car than any other car. And of course, the FIA was very quick to ban that type of rear wing. So we've not seen it again. They've had to adapt. But if Aston Martin could have kept that rear wing for this year, they probably would have. So as a result, the battle for outwash began. Many other teams have been able to develop cars in a way that can actually push air away from their cars. So the outwash one I'm talking about here is just spewing all the air away from their car. So their cars are fine. They've got a nice little slipstream and all of the cars behind them. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Let them have problems and let's make it harder for them to overtake. So the engineering bods are absolutely rubbing their hands together and with pride and joy that they were able to figure this out. I bet they're a hoot at those kind of colleague parties. But for us, the people, the public that want to see a good race, you're going to see less and less overtaking. At the beginning of 2022, we saw plenty of overtaking, loads. We heralded this rule change as a success. The ground effect cars were lauded as the savior of Formula One entertainment. And then as the season progressed, we saw less overtaking. And now we're seeing considerably less overtaking this year, further still. Unless you're in Zandvoort, of course, and it's a wet weekend. Therefore, it doesn't really matter about downforce and overtaking with straights and outwash you just end up being washed up because of the water outside of the car. Aston Martin did it mainly out of defense, but it completely ruined the purpose and undermined the act of overtaking. Now, of course, the team's gonna be very selfish. They're thinking about their own needs and wants, not the other teams and the overall paying public. But it all really came to a head when Carlos Sainz at the Italian Grand Prix mentioned that he was now really getting worried about the act of trying to overtake at a place where at Monza, it should be quite easy to overtake, but it really wasn't. He was actually saying that they're back to 2020 and 2021 levels of difficulty when it comes to trying to overtake the car ahead of them. And he believes that they are going to need a DRS at 99% of the tracks that they are going to be visiting from now on, unless there is something done about the act of outwashing and difficulty of overtaking. It just seems really odd that the FIA was also talking about phasing out DRS. You remember that conversation back in 2022? They were actually considering that, oh, well, with our technical know-how and our innovation, you won't even need DRS. We're slowly going to phase it out and make it less important. Get rid of DRS zones because we're not going to need those. Uh, we're going to need those, aren't we? Dang it. You can include more and more excluded zones of innovation, but those smart people who earn their paychecks at the big teams, and even the small teams in a way, will think around it no matter which little part you actually try and find innovation in. I mean, 
all these little winglets and all these little bits of things and pieces. The floor, for example, diffusers. I'm seeing tiny little winglets around the suspension. They are really trying to find every single bit of downforce that it can get at the expense of the cars behind them. Because remember back in Monza in 2021, the Mercedes car being one of the best out there was really complaining about being able to follow cars behind. Because Valtteri Bottas, you think one of the best cars out there would have been able to slew its way past everyone else, but they were complaining about overheating because that car was not configured to be fighting in the midfield and therefore because they were stuck behind cars, the cars overheated, they had to pull back and then try again. Once you got 1.5 seconds behind the car in front of you, you were going to struggle. 2022 was meant to fix that, where you could be within half a second and then DRS could do the rest and then everything would be fine. Now we're getting back to where we were and all of the teams have sunk tens of millions of dollars of R&D into all of these rule changes, ground effect, and now it's been completely pointless. So yeah. <sighs> Good going, guys. You're earning your paycheck, but you're not really earning any favors with us, the entertaining paying public. And then to top it all off, you've got the whole flexi wing situation. Everyone trying to find extra downforce at the expense of other teams. You've got Mercedes, you've got Aston, you've got McLaren. Pretty much nearly all the Mercedes powered teams, except for Williams, because they barely have any wing to actually add downforce to. They're now at the mercy of a new technical regulation coming out in Singapore, where the FIA is going to be keeping a closer look at what they're doing with their front wing. So. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some kind of limitation and hindrance for what their cars can actually do. And FIA, come on, you're supposed to be allowing the other teams to catch up, not slow them down potentially. I really hope that doesn't happen because we're trying to actually get closer to Red Bull, not pull them back. I mean, come on. But anyway, that, that's besides the point. The main issue is, is that the entire thesis of 2022 is slowly being chipped away. And I bet that in 2024, because there is going to be no rule changes because they want to bring these forward, these new rule changes for 2025, but they can't because it's too late. Pretty much the designs for 2024 for these teams have actually been locked in and you can't really change the regulations right now. You'd have had to have done that three months ago. We're probably going to have next year more and more issues with outwash, cars finding it harder and harder to actually overtake the car in front of them. It's going to be a really, really big problem. But now Ferrari might be exacerbating this even more, going to a more Red Bull concept with what they call Progetto 676. Many different technical changes they are making to the car actually sort of go in towards Red Bull. And we've seen that they've gone away from their wash basin effect, which Aston Martin have actually fully embraced, finding different ways of increasing downforce, making their cars better, and they don't chew up their tires. Then you've got the news about Haas just throwing away their Ferrari concept, which they have been following, and now going towards the Red Bull concept and being very shameless about it. Gunther Steiner's basically said, we're going to have a B-spec car, which is basically the Red Bull. I thought Alpha Tauri was being shameless about copying the RB19. I didn't think another team would be even more shameless. I mean, bravo, I, I guess. I don't know what to think about that. Okay, Haas is doing something, but I don't know whether this is going to actually fix their tire problem because that's the big underlying issue with Haas at the moment. And now they're basically just scrapping their ideas and telling Delara, just copy and paste the Red Bull car. I mean, if this actually causes Williams to lose seventh place in the constructors, I'll be really annoyed because Williams are trying so hard with limited resources that they've got. And Haas just comes in, controls C's and controls V, and then they get past. It's quite clear the Red Bull way of making a car is going to be de rigueur. Ferrari, they held out for a little longer, but even they're starting to go towards Red Bull. And we're now, of course, going to actually see some problems going forward. And of course, Carlos Sainz was right. We actually saw many times that cars were really struggling to actually get close to the car in front of them. Even Max was having some trouble for the first 14 laps before he then decided to actually try and get past Carlos Sainz after he locked into turn one. Had Carlos Sainz not done that, probably they would have had to wait until the pit stops to get the undercut on Carlos and then just romped into the distance because that RB19 is probably not geared to long-term battles with other cars because we got that with the Mercedes a couple of years ago because they were designed to be out front in clean air. I think the Red Bull is now actually developing itself into that situation because they're just so darn good. So what is the FI actually going to do? Well, they can't do a whole lot of changes because all the teams are actually going to be focused on 2026 when there are going to be plenty of rule changes there, mostly focused about the powertrain, but there'll probably be some other changes too to try and make the cars smaller, lighter, and therefore a little bit more efficient. But there are three places where the FI is looking at to try and claw back some of the outwash concerns. 
These include the end plates of the front wing, the sides of the floor, because you get many little flicks there, and then fins inside the wheels. So it's around the brake ducts, really. So the fins above the wheels, then you've got the actual covers, trying to find ways of reducing the outwash effect and therefore making cars easier to get close to and then overtake them. But the point is, is that I don't think they were really expecting to try and figure out problems right now. But I think they really should have been a little bit more hot on this after the whole outwash effect on the Aston Martin rear wing. Yeah, that was a really big red flag for the FIA to realize that, oh, they're figuring out problems not even halfway into the 2022 season. We better probably fix that for 2024 or even better the next year. Yes, they fixed it for that particular thing, but they didn't really look at other places until now where we're having overtaking being a premium like it used to be. And now they're dealing with the same problems that they had two or three years ago. Well done. But then again, it's technical innovation and that's the price you pay for not having a spec series where everything is controlled. So I bet we're actually going to see a massive development war in 2024 because all these teams are realizing that they've got to make the most of these stable regulations until 2025 comes along. So I wouldn't be surprised that of those points of concern, like the side of the floor, the end plates for the front wing and all of those other things, there's going to be massive innovation because they may as well just try it out now before then things get limited. They'll have to find other places to try and innovate and then we'll get that thing for one season and then another rule change. We did get a slight rule change that compromised the Mercedes a little bit and heavily compromised the 2021 Aston Martin. The Aston Martin car really suffered that year. But things are looking ugly for the FIA and it's means to try and keep overtaking relatively simple. But I think there are ways that Formula 1 could be even uglier. If you watch this video next, which are the ugliest cars of all time?